Hello and welcome to Big Orbit's Kyfet Vanguard weekly update. My name is James and today we have all of the VEBO2 cards spoiled as well as some extra little Shadow Paladin cards from VBTO2 that I'll show towards the end. There aren't many Aquaforce cards left to go through so I'll quickly go through their remaining two before the other clans. They get their final triple R with Stormrider Diamantes. He's a grade 3 with the Axel marker and Auto Vanguard Circle Rearguard Circle when it attacks. If it's the first battle of the turn this unit gets plus 3000 power until the end of the turn and he also has auto rig once per turn when it attacks. If it is the third battle of the turn or more, cost counter blast one and discard a card, stand this unit and it gets minus 3000 power until the end of the turn. So it seems the best way to use this is to attack with him first, then restand him with one of your other units and then restand him once more through his own skill. His skill is a little costly and the discard may cause some issues, but you will definitely have to work around Diamantes to get the most of him. Aquas also get a single R grade too, Trident Shooter. His skill is auto rearguard circle at the end of the battle that this unit attacked a vanguard. If this unit is on an additional rearguard circle, counter blast one and soul blast one and exchange positions of this unit and one of your rear guards. This is the only card for Aquaforce currently that can switch by additional rear guard circle. It means this skill can only be used on an Excel circle. So it does limit his use somewhat. But you get another copy of Trident Shooter to have a loop throughout the turns. It would be costly, but you would be getting the 10k from the circle. On to Grand Blue, we have the single R Grade 2, Commodore Blue Blood. His first skill is Continuous Rearguard Circle during your turn. If you have a Commodore Blue Blood in your drop zone, this unit gets plus 4000 power. This is going to hit that lovely 13k marker, making it nice against Force decks. He also has Auto Rearguard Circle when its attack hits the Vanguard. Plus retire this unit, draw two cards and discard one card from your hand. This continues to fuel the drop zone requirements, gives future Commodore Blue Bloods that plus 4k power and draws you a card. Luckily you can discard any card from your hand, meaning you get a better chance of discarding something that belongs in the drop zone, such as your Skull Dragons. Skeleton Bomber is an interesting grade too. He has 1k less power than usual, but he has the skill Act Drop Zone. If you have three or more Skeleton Bombers in your drop zone, cost counter plus one, call up to four Skeleton Bomber from your drop zone to separate rearguard circle. Until the end of turn, they get plus 4,000 power and boost. This is very cheap cost to call four units, but it's the condition that's going to cause an issue. With skills that allow you to choose specific cards from your deck to put into the drop zone, this may become a consistent way of filling the field. Right now, it may not be the best thing to run though, as two copies at the bottom of the deck can ruin the whole skill. Fancy Guy Alvaro is another great two with the simple skill of auto rearguard circle when placed from the drop zone, it gains plus 10,000 power until the end of the turn. This is especially good if you can do it early on, especially if you can get a crit trigger placed onto him. Then you can just intercept with him and activate his skill again the next turn. Grand Blue get a common grade three with a Violence Franger. His skill is act Vanguard Circle Rearguard Circle once per turn, cost Soul Blast one, grade three, and discard any number of cards from your hand. This unit gets plus 5,000 power until the end of the turn and during the battle that it attacked, your opponent cannot call Sentinels nor cards with the same grade as the cards you discarded for the cost to Guardian Circle from hand. This could add a lot of pressure if you discard a grade zero as they have such high shield value these days. It does take a little bit of setup and doesn't quite have the same outcome as something like Victorious Deer or Death Warden Antlion, taking into account the rest of the clan's support. But seeing as you can easily call this from drop zone, meaning you don't have to worry about your opponent getting rid of it forever. Norman the Ghosty is a grade one with 7k power and act rearguard circle costs retire this unit and put the top two cards from your deck into the drop zone. And one of your other units gets plus 10,000 power into the end of turn. Yet more drop zone setup, but the nice thing about this card is it's a common, so it's much easier to pick up for budget Grand Blue players. And lastly for Grand Blue, they have the Grade 1 Vanilla card, Injury Shade. Seems you want to fill the little drop zone, having a Grade 1 whose purpose is to be guarded with and put into the drop zone is pretty useful for the clan. For Dimension Police, we have the classic Grade 1 unit, Commander Laurel. He's a double R with 6,000 power and the skill, Act, Rearguard Circle once per turn, cost, counter blast 1, and rest 4 of your rearguards. Choose one of your units, and until the end of turn, double its power and it gets critical plus one. As it's an act, unlike the previous version, you can call over the rested units. He's also a great option for Super Dayusha for the first ride to go to huge powers and to three critical. Because your opponent won't have a great chance of having a perfect guard by then. This is a great chance to get in a lot of early damage. Dimension Police's last single R is Masked Police Grander. He's a grade two with continuous rearguard circle. If your opponent's critical is two or greater, this unit gets plus 5,000 power. Even 
even if your vanguard doesn't gain its skill to get plus one critical, you can still fulfill the condition through critical triggers. So long as you're going in for the extra critical each turn, you're essentially getting a permanent 15k grade too. This also accounts for your opponent's turn, so if you damage check a critical trick, your rearguard can also gain some defense. Masked Police Leader Silvard is a grade 3 with no gift, and the skill Continuous Rearguard Circle. If your vanguard's power is 30,000 or greater, this unit gets plus 5,000 power and plus 1 critical. This is a slightly better version than Grander, and attacks for 18,000 on its own. It's hard to say if this would be ran as a third grade 3, especially with Miracle Beauty around but this guy proves to be a pretty threatening rearguard, and the ultimate Daiyushu giving him plus 10,000 can make all the difference for the final turn. Mad Scepter X is a grade 2 vanilla card with 10,000 shield value, but could be pretty useful for the police to help with their lack of draw power. And lastly for Dimension Police, we have a little more miracle support with Miracle Fairy Lalapi. Her skill auto rearguard circle at the end of the battle that it boosted. Cost counterblast 1 and put this unit into your souls. Stand a miracle beauty on your rearguard circle and it gets minus 5000 power until the end of the turn. Though the power loss does put miracle beauty at 8000 power, she does have the ability to stand the unit in the same column as her. So it still gives her a chance to hit. It's interesting the side of Dimension Police, instead of just getting lots of power and criticals, the miracles are going in for a very different playstyle with restanding and cards that help with defense. For the trigger units, D Police get two critical triggers, Dimensional Robo Die Battles and Justice Cobalt. The draw trigger is Army Penguin, and the heal is Dimensional Robo Go Rescue. For Grand Blue, we have Night Spirit and Mortal Mimic as the critical triggers, Steering Pirate Paolo as a draw, and Rick the Ghosty as a heal. We didn't see Samurai Spirit in this set, but hopefully we do get to see him in the future, and can have some kind of fun Spirit Exceed interaction again with the Knight and Samurai. The last batch of triggers is for Aqua Force, and we have Supersonic Soul Soldier and Battleship Intelligence as the criticals, Paroxene Communication Sea Otter Soldier as the draw, Outride Draco Kid and Dolphin Soldier of High Speed Raids as the front triggers, and Medical Officer of the Rainbow Elixir as the heal. The Grade 1 Perfect Guards of the Clans are Masked Police Albino for Deep Police, Retreat Francine for Grand Blue, and Battle Siren Emelda for Aquaforce. Lastly for the week we have a couple of Shadow Paladin cards from BTO2. The first one is the Grade 2 Knight of Isolation Oengus. His skill is Continuous Rearguard Circle during your turn. If you have no other rearguards, this unit gets plus 10,000 power. This gives us an idea of what the clan is going for in this set. We can obviously expect retiring your own units, but going by this card we can either expect a lot of retiring or not that much superior calling, though we will soon find out. And finally for this week we have Nightmare Painter. A grade 1 with auto rearguard circle when placed costs put a grade 1 or less card from your drop zone into your soul and this unit gets plus 3000 power until the end of the turn. It's a nice 10k booster that will likely be retired so you can bring out some more on entries later in the game. Though the first skill may clash badly with Ritual and Premium, it could be showing that we'll get a similar skill to Alfred early in Shadow Paladins and they don't want you to easily put Blaster Dark into the soul. Still, the soul is a valuable resource in standard for most of the decks, so this is likely going to be very useful for Shadows when we get to see more support. And also, Big Orbit will be hosting a CFE tournament at TCGCon at Stratford-upon-Avon in the UK on August the 18th, as well as a standard and premium tournament for Vanguard. We will also be hosting tournaments for Final Fantasy TCG and Dragon Ball Super TCG, which will be happening on the 18th and 19th. The link for more information and to buy tickets will be in the description below. Feel free to let me know your feelings on the new cards and let me know your thoughts on the new Shadow Paladin cards. There is a lot of hype for Shadows and although we haven't seen much of them yet, there will be plenty to come in the next few weeks. I hope to see you next week where I'll be going through the card showing throughout the next 7 days. Bye!